time opening. We have an eye, sort of a nostril, two teeth. Hmm. One of the teeth has a small cavity. Close call, folks, but I think we got here just in time. Presented by Maria Menounos and Kevin Undergaro. This is Anatomy of a Movie. In-depth discussions and breakdowns of various movie titles. And now that you've seen the movie, let the dissection begin. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Anatomy of a Movie. Such creepy music. (laughs) Which can only mean we're talking about Under the Skin, the new Jonathan Glaser movie that took 10 years to make. A uh, very polarizing movie, uh, to say the least. Um, you know, so we're gonna have some uh, we're gonna have some debate, some <laughs> healthy debate on tonight's podcast, um, which is why you know I think we're doing ultimately the podcast. It, it, we have an all male panel today. Uh, John Comerford. Yes, hello everybody. Ian Kaiser returns by popular demand since Gravity. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I guess I'm sitting in for Sarah, which uh, I'm sure most of you are disappointed about And, and Dimitri there. already hates the movie not so much that he's getting up and leaving. Um, I'm not nearly as smart and definitely not as cute as Sarah, but uh, I'll, try, I'll try my best. <laughs> oh, don't sell yourself short. All right. Dimitri, you're back. I am back. Yeah, I just had to... My, my, my seat keeps on sinking. I see. So, I see. So. Maybe, kind of maybe the it's because you got of while you're watching, the watching this movie. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's Absolutely. Uh, Ian playing jokes on you. That's right. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time. I, I like how Ian only comes back for the sci-fi movies. Yeah, he did nice, Gravity man. and now this. I'm so kind of a but at least they're two different nerd. ones. Yes. Yes. Very different <laughs> sci-fi ones. Yeah. All right. So Under the Skin, um, as I said, very polarizing, but important to discuss nonetheless. And so I want to get your guys' general thoughts going into it and you know what you guys thought about it. Let's start with you, John. Oh, um, for me. Okay. Well, I, I don't think I, well, as you said, polarizing. I don't think I'm on either polar end. I didn't hate it, but I didn't think it's genius. Uh, although I have to say that there were, there's a point there in the movie because you know he has the he loves his long takes, and it made me as I was waiting for the next thing to happen. I was thinking of all the things I could be doing or rather be doing, and I go, <laughs> you know, if it hadn't been for the fact that I had I, I had to watch it to, so I could come here and discuss it, I I, I would have left. Because there are other things I would have rather do. It's funny that so you say you that because a gentleman that uh, sitting to the left of me, he yeah. obviously did have other things to do, yeah. and he left with twenty minutes left to go in the movie. Yeah, and I was like, "Wow, you can't even wait!" Like, yeah. like yeah. he just didn't care enough that he just walked out. And, and uh, I was on Dimitri's right. <laughs> That was the guy on our left, and the guy on my right, directly to my right, was snoring throughout the entire, like deep, like this, the entire movie. And then yeah. I think I think he woke up at the very end, and he went to I think he was with his wife or something. He was like, "What was that?" Hey, she goes, "Here, I have some popcorn." What just happened? Yeah. <laughs> Again, it, it, it's one of those movies that it certainly doesn't hold your hand. No, you have to mm. you have to interpret as you may, and mm. and obviously, you know we'll we'll talk about kind of the adaptation of it because it's based off a book, mm-hmm. Michael Faber's uh, Under the Skin, mm-hmm. and Ian can speak to that heavily when we get there. But yeah, you have to interpret as you will, and it's heavily. not it is not for everybody. No, 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 not at all. I'm sure there's an audience that loves this kind of stuff. In fact, there's I'm, I, I, you've been reading about it. The people think it's genius. It's Kubrickian, all that kind of stuff they're saying about it. Masterpiece, the masterpiece, all that kind of stuff. Okay, all right, that's a little hyper, hyperbolic for me, but that's all right. All right. Whatever. I mean, here's what I can take away from it. I may not agree with everything, mm-hmm. you know, and we'll, but we'll still certainly answer all those questions. But I look at some of the techniques, and you know, I gotta love the technique. Okay. You know, is the story 100% there? You know, that's debatable, but, you know, there's there's a lot of great techniques great, for I, any wannabe I wanna, filmmaker. I want to hear away. what you have to say about those techniques because I'm not exactly sure what you're talking what, about. So when you, we get to that, let's make sure we discuss. Yeah, I mean, for me, when we walked out of the movie, I, 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 Ian, I must have had a befuddled expression uh, on my face. I, I was like, I'm not even going to pretend mm-hmm. to know what the hell I just saw like I'm not even gonna like I won't even take that pretentious route Mm -hmm. and say oh the meaning of existential life Mm -hmm. and blah 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 I I couldn't even do that with this movie Um, it's definitely a movie that you have to sit and and chew on you have to sort of envelop it think about it when I started doing research on it that is when actually when I started Mm -hmm. looking some stuff up that's when I was like 
okay, I'm starting to at least appreciate the movie. Mm-hmm. To a lot of the reviews, you know, masterpiece and things like that, I was like, okay. Um, some of the shots were beautiful, uh, I, I thought. Um, but then again, there were a few that <clears throat> some of them that are just kind of boring and ordinary, and uh, some of them are out of focus. No, I'm not gonna. Yeah, so I was I like, mean, yeah, what? So you when know, you say masterpiece, I go, was it supposed to be? Uh, yeah, no, I, I and but but you can't. There were some shots. There sure. were some scenery that I, that I thought looked fantastic. And you would hope every film would have those, though. I mean, yeah, well, cinematically, th- this one I think was way more. This one you're along for a sort of kind of cinematic visual ride mm-hmm. than you are a yeah. narrative ride. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to, you got to piece together visually, you know, what this movie is telling you narratively wise and try to piece that together and then break it down that this is an alien movie mm-hmm. uh, in, in a sense that it's, it's one of those, it's an alien predator type of a movie where the alien is the predator mm-hmm. uh, and, and try to, you know, try to take that and the movie gives you a lot to take in now whether you love it or hate it i, I can totally understand why people would hate it Absolutely. i got why that guy mm-hmm. walked out I, yeah. I mean because there was a point where i was like what the hell is going on here and um but i didn't walk out and and, and i will say this uh it didn't make me angry mm-hmm. i was i was mesmerized and captivated by what is going on here? I was going in with the flow and I was hoping something may or uh, wasn't going to I mean, be explained. It, 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 it makes, kept me going. It makes you work for the rewards. Which, well, we, you know, again, <clears throat> Ian can speak to this. We, we, you and I kind of share that book-wise, you know, forms of that David Foster Wallace's Infinite Jest is heavily known for that, but where you have to work to gain something from it. And that's yeah, which, part of the research that Dimitri was doing after yeah. the film. You know, mm-hmm. it wasn't just the film he had to take in. It's, everything in addition to that. Yeah, no, I, I think that's that's important, the the immersive experience of what you learn afterwards and doing re- But I also think the point I was making to Dimitri after the film, I, I he was saying, well, I, I'm not gonna, like you were just saying, attempt to figure out what was it. It was about, I, I don't know if this film, I mean, I'm sure we'll talk about it, but I don't know that you're gonna get so much out of it if you're really just looking to find the narrative thread and why did this yeah. happen and why did this. I think it's a movie that, um, you're going to get the most out of when you say, well, what emotions did it evoke from this scene? What did I get out of it? What was I feeling during this scene? And and some of the bigger, I think, concepts that it was talking about or, or just that it made you look at um, some of the things about consent and people, you know, what she's Alienation, doing. Alienation. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> no, literally. Or, yeah, no, yeah. I mean, it's Absolutely. I think, I think the discussions that could come out of it, mm. I think, are maybe more valuable than – than just looking at it as as, yeah, as you, a narrative film. You can't go in thinking you're going to get a, a narrative Captain story. America. Right. You just, you know, that's not, not what it is. It's no. Like, and and, and but, I didn't know. I, I haven't read the book. I didn't even I didn't even see the trailer for this. So I had no idea what this movie was at all. And, 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 and you know, to your point, like, but I don't know how else anybody would attempt to go into this movie. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, again, even the trailer, like, there's a sense of something going on there. Uh, uh, it's gotten some good reviews. Hence, I think it's like an 84% on Rotten Tomatoes. And it's gotten some horrible reviews. If, no, that. absolutely. Yeah. But when you're in an 84%, yeah. it's got way more positive. And so... Uh, well, that's the critics, though. Some, true. I believe the audience is more like 60, 65. Oh, it's probably like a D. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I, I mean, I don't know if there was a cinema score done on that one. Yeah. But if you're going into that movie and yeah. you... I don't think you're going to know the wiser that this is going to be a little bit something different. I mean, I didn't expect the movie to be what it was. Let's start with, let's start, let's let's start with, let's go into the, how it initially got made. Keep that question. Yeah, keep it in. There's a rundown in front of you. No, no, but keep it question. Just remind it. When it comes time, we'll ask it. Um, Again, so we we kind of talked about that it was it was based off of the book, and mm-hmm. does you know I couldn't find initial research on how how it fully got made. I mean, uh, it's, obviously it's by Jonathan Glazer. It took ten years to fully develop and, and get made, um, which is part of the marketing behind it of like ooh, Scar- let's see Scarlett Johansson, you know, in this movie that she made years ago almost. Right. Um, but does anyone have kind of you know before I get into fully. What I found does any anyone found kind of more than just the cursory stuff? Well, outside of the ten years, I mean, he, he, this was something he had read the book. Uh, yes. Jonathan Glazer had read the book, and he was fascinated by the book. But he had also said, I, "I'm never going to adapt a book. Uh, it's just not what I do." And <clears throat> although he found it interesting, uh, it some people through, say he didn't really adapt the book here. Well, but it, but, yeah. but he will admit to that. Yeah. He would say, 
I didn't jumping adapt, off right. Point. He 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 was trying to. He knew he wanted to make it. He mm-hmm. just couldn't figure out the point of view mm-hmm. as to make it from. And then uh, a script went through many iterations, and and we even talk about many casting choices and changes in the plot where where the the aliens were a farmer couple, and I believe Brad Pitt. Yeah, so the first three drafts were written by Alexander Stewart. He's a novelist. Um, and yeah, there was a Scottish couple, and Brad Pitt was supposed to play one of the... The farmer, and I yeah. Don't, you know, I don't know who... The, I didn't read the book enough, so maybe that's Same part way. of the book, but how, you know, looking back on it, how did that have fit in? I, I have no idea. Again, without having read the book, but you know, I. but eventually he got to the point where he wanted to look at what if I looked at humanity through an alien's eyes. Mm-hmm. And uh, hence, he that was his eureka moment, you know, or he, he had hit his head on the sink and the flux capacitor <laughs> w- w- was invented. And he's like, wow, what if I just have this predatory alien going mm-hmm. through and, uh, a- 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 and-, and seeking humanity and-, and things like that? And that's where he ended up going from. Uh, it took 10 years for him to try to get to this point. But then... You know, the, the the whole process, you know, to me, I found very interesting as well as how we filmed it. The <clears throat> truly guerrilla style, hidden camera kind of uh, filming this movie, um, if, if, you know, reading mm-hmm. on it. Yeah. You know, the, a lot of the people, basically, we have Scarlett Johansson trying van. very hard not to look like Scarlett right. Johansson, still very attractive in a van, wig, red lipstick, and going through the streets and, and in a sense almost propositioning single males. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the males who came up to the truck were, were, were just ordinary citizens. And she'd Didn't say, know Hi, they were being filmed. Yeah, I'm lost and whatever. And and apparently sometimes they you know, they had eight hidden cameras mm-hmm. and sometimes they'd let a scene play out for like a half an hour. Mm-hmm. And uh and those and who signed the waiver were in the film, and, and those who didn't. <laughs> yeah, and and but there were a few who didn't that they thought they had like cinematic gold with, and they decided not to consent. And mm-hmm. you know, but to me, that that's a very clever way of filmmaking. It's something that I don't know we haven't seen in a while, except for maybe candid camera. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, but you you know, I I just felt that, and to make it suspenseful, and to make it cinematic in a way. I thought that that was great. Like even the mall stuff with her shopping in the mall, like a lot of the customers in the mall were unaware that they were being mm-hmm. filmed. And yeah, I, you know, I, I found that the way that it was filmed and the more I, I read about it and I took it in, you know, I came up with my own interpretation. It doesn't mm-hmm. mean that it's everybody here or anybody, you know, who's watching. I think this is a great movie for us to discuss and hope, you know, the people who've watched this, I don't, God, I'd love to their opinions too, because hopefully maybe they're trying to find answers. I don't know if I'm going to give them to you, but or well, we'll we are. In terms of the um, adaptation, um, and I'm hoping Ian, you can jump in more with this, but there was a farm system in the book that is missing very much so from the, the film. Obviously, the focus was on you know this one person, and the only kind of indication that there's somebody else is perhaps the biker. Right. But I don't know how you'd interpret that if you didn't know that from the book. Yeah, the only the only I, I've listened to uh, our sister network did a podcast on the book, um, Book Circle Online. Book Circle Online, and I, I listened to that. That this is the only information I have, and this is a little while ago they did it. Um, but my understanding, it it's there's a lot in the book that this obviously yeah. this film. There's uh, I guess there's issues of of class on the alien planet, I guess. And the, well, the humans are called Vatsels. It's like V-O-D-S-E-L, I believe. And, um, and there, there's an entire factory farming system that's taking place, I guess, on, on earth with people like Scarlett Johansson's character, who has a name in the book, um, who, who lures these guys and brings them back. And it's only the wealthy class that eats this kind of the human goo. And um, so there's all kinds of layers about how it's done. And I think it, which also sets up for, for other questions that they spoke a little bit about, about factory farming mm-hmm. and about, um, so yeah. Hum- it, see, they, this is in, very interesting to me because I didn't read the book. I didn't even hear the podcast. So the, it's a farm system in the sense that they're growing humans to consume. I, I don't know that. I mean, again, that's, the, what, uh, you, the, that's the, what we gather. That, it's, yeah. Uh, the, the, okay. It's, Again, human human flesh, and re- remember when they kind of liquidated the people sure. that that scene, mm-hmm. and you were kind of wondering what that was about. That's what it's about. It's about you know the consumption of the humans mm-hmm. 
for the aliens and, and again you're not initially told that right. it's because it's a delicacy and the higher class aliens right. get to you know have the it's like almost steak for us versus yeah. like mm -hmm. and whatever. my understanding in the book i what i've what i've heard is she she takes a lot of pride in her job it's like it's a very honorable job that she does <laughs> but she doesn't know about actually how the goo is extracted and things like the the human parts are are dealt with and i guess they're castrated and there's some more mm -hmm. like about specifically how it's done and she goes back to her planet or whatever and mm -hmm. kind of sees it and starts having these kind of changes of heart about what she's doing it's and like how she's doing pate it and <laughs> exactly, yeah <laughs> <laughs> well it, it's interesting because i had even like that one scene you were just talking about like mm -hmm. where it was and again, visually, I thought it was a great scene, but it was the conveyor belt. It was the red and yeah. the conveyor belts going to the red slash of lights, uh, you know, and all I kept on thinking was Soylent Red is people. <laughs> Soylent Red is people. <laughs> so that's all I kept on thinking about in that scene. Like, I knew that it was yeah. human. I knew that they were, in a sense, eating us mm -hmm. again if you don't know going in that's a leap <laughs> yeah well yeah i, 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 don't, like, I don't know i didn't know it i, I had yeah. no idea what it was i thought the you know the the uh, liquid floor of limbo death was fascinating uh but and then when mm. they're when they implode i thought that visually arresting and it was like unnerving as i was watching it i, I did not get the conveyor belt of red goo was uh human liver pate <laughs> i did not get that there's two questions that come up for me as we're discussing it one um you know which we'll kind of get into but the first one being if you're a fan of the book mm -hmm. are you going to be disappointed if you go see this movie well just based on what i've heard here i go that stuff that you guys are all talking about is far more fascinating to me than <laughs> well, what okay, i witnessed so, so then that answers so. that answers my second question because of the book you know sci-fi typically has a lot of exposition and, mm -hmm. and you know kind of these things which you know as you're saying the book is having mm -hmm. The movie, unlike most sci-fi, does not have pretty much any exposition. There's no backstory. No. There's no exposition. No, there's you, no character development. Well, very little character development, I guess you could say. Let me, let me throw this onto the table um, because this is one thing that I thought of, again, after reading uh, about it. You know, I found, the, I found the ending to be hugely ironic um, because here you have, this is a movie which is about an alien, a predator. Mm -hmm basically. And this alien um, uh, was seeking out single males. Mm -hmm. I found it interesting that there were no female, but it was all single male mm -hmm. uh, who had no families, nobody to go home to. It's like to crab. You can only catch the male. <clears throat> you can't catch the female. Oh, they, is that? Yeah. yeah well, is, well, do you, you know why like she was... It, well, so you got to let them females procreate. She, was, the she males. was going after the males because, again, I think they were higher delicacy than the females. But From I, the book, I know, I know yeah, what you're saying. I know but, what you're saying. But what I'm getting at is the end is a complete reversal whereas she's alone and she's being hunted by the human predator who's mm -hmm. a, you know he's a supposed rapist mm -hmm. or, or you know he's yeah i guess he's a rapist in a way because she's left alone she she mm -hmm. escaped she she's got none of her alien brethren the biker gang isn't anywhere near her she's alone in the forest with no family to go to not sure of who she is and where she's fitting in at this point mm -hmm. and she becomes she becomes she prey to a, a prey. predator, yeah. to to a human predator who mm -hmm. that's exactly what he is going to prey upon. Mm -hmm. And so at the end, when she meets her demise, mm -hmm. to me, I just found that to be like in science fiction, Turns irony always. Bay. Yeah, but but he tries to rape her, and you know that to me in science fiction some good science fiction is built around irony, like the Twilight Zone. And that end to me, once I was. Mm -hmm. I had to do a lot of thinking about. I, of it wasn't in the movie. Like I didn't come out going, "Wow, that's amazing." Mm -hmm. I thought about it a lot, and then my interpretation when I got out, I was like, "Going, oh, I, I okay, I, I sort of kind of get that." And wow, that that is some clever. To me, I found it clever irony. Let me that. let me pose this. Did anybody else see that? Or let me pose yeah. this to you guys Absolutely. because you know I agree with what you're saying. But as she's praying, she's praying on, I, th I think there's a very deliberate choice in the fact that she's praying on people that will not be missed. I think right. that's a deliberate yeah. choice on her yeah. part because... She wants those that are alone, they don't have any family, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, she wants... Right. You know, and I, th I think she's sensitive to that and, and kind of shows compassion, right? And, you know, where this is being... Wait, I don't know that it's compassion. I thought she was doing that because they didn't want to be found out. Yeah, I you think that's why I, 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 mean, that's the way I took that too. 
even when she was listening to the the radio broadcast about the family mm-hmm. that went missing, I think she was even wondering how that would affect. Yeah, I, you know I, what she has gone. I mean, I, mean like that. I just didn't assign it compassion. Then, yeah, that's all. but I assigned I mean, compassion for one of a couple of reasons. One, um, because of the baby, right? She, did, I don't, she didn't. You know, that was such a haunting moment when yeah. you know she kept seeing babies and she left that baby. Um, and then the elephant man, as we'll kind of call him throughout this. And and, th- and again, this I didn't assign compassion to the fact that she left the baby there. Yeah, unattended. I, I think There's no way it's it, going to survive. But let, okay, so in that so. regard, I think she was falling. You know, through this whole thing, I think she had very specific choices, mm-hmm. right? And it was to go after people who will not be missed. And then eventually, she grew to love these people. It's like it's like a, a sheep herder falling in love with the sheep, or mm-hmm. I don't I don't know of a better analogy than that. And then eventually caught up to her in that moment when you know she's trying to make love with with the human. She wants to understand what right. what it is to like to be that way, but she can't because she doesn't have, for lack of a better term, the necessary parts. <laughs> and then now humanity at its darkest. You know she's doing it. There's a purpose behind it. Mm-hmm. Um, he's doing it because he's trying to show power, aggression, you know, and all those different things. But I but I think that she was doing it to show her power. And listen, bottom line is. Men are stupid. Uh, you know, I mean, no, I mean, they're guided by their penises. Mm-hmm. I mean, because why else would you be getting into, like, and, and I'm not going to lie, somebody as attractive as that, I'm looking for help. Hey, do you need a lift? Because I'm going down the street. The whole thing, again, you have to make the leap. Like, she somehow Svengali's these people mm-hmm. to walk into this dark, huge warehouse and they're going into, like, Whatever the hell they're walking this water, the I liquid limbo of death. I I know, like, I, yeah, I would have been ooh cold, cold. I gotta okay. go. <laughs> but yeah. it was just weird because it was never. Again, it's one of those leaps that you sort of have to take to figure out how she did it. Now, there was one one uh, of her prey that she didn't um, she didn't seduce. The I mean, she man. yeah she conked them in the head. Yeah, that was the with, beach with guy. the rock. Yeah, oh, the guy, beach. Yeah. yeah, whatever. Yeah, that 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 was the one guy. Well, she seduced the elephant man because he yeah, got in the got, car yeah. and and he obviously walked through. But but the guy at the beach, no, he wasn't she, interested. Um, yeah, she she conked, conked him on the, the head, head and and killed him that way and left the baby and the family. You know, they had a family. It's like, oh well, I I have my meat, I have my supper. Mm-hmm. Um, so I found that that was very interesting. That that there was one uh, victim that that didn't follow her fall to her uh, wily ways you know I, I find it uh very hilarious how how again very polarizing movie but i, I for me i'm looking at the dark side of humanity you guys mm-hmm. are kind of being like just you know men would think they're penises so it's okay but aliens are worse i like right. that i like how you <laughs> guys are making that i don't invention. know how you're making that leap i'm not saying aliens are All worse right, John, you, you spoke you've spoken the least on this panel thus far well <laughs> well <laughs> so go okay well i i just didn't see the I didn't see her compassion, um, really. I mean, until she sees the fly trying to get out of the window, and I guess she's thinking, oh, my God, here's a fly who can't get out. Oh, and I just put that guy in the liquid floor of death or whatever the hell. Uh, Let me let him out. So she thinks of us as much as a fly. At least I don't know if that's what what they were going for. That's just what I ascribed it to because, okay. okay. But you could also, just in that regard, you can take it and say, hey, you know, the fact that you called humanity and flies. No, no, I understand. Everybody's equal and that could be a beautiful thing. It could be, but uh, I I was looking at it and going, okay, but you're saying that she's compassionate. I didn't see her compassion at the the shoreline with the baby because it's like you you left the, even if you're an alien, I would think, well, that you would realize, done? well, I don't know, move the baby away from the shoreline. Uh, I don't know, but they, they didn't. It, it, that's my point is I don't think they had any regard for it because they don't think of it as anything worth a, except a food source. And at that moment, that's not the food source I need. So I, and, and again, they're aliens. So I, I don't even know if, know if they know compassion or, or right. what we would ascribe to or. or well, even, I mean, that. highlighted by the shots of these just masses of people walking that you have yeah. no that. I don't know. It's just they're. There's no questions about like who are all these people and what no, are their yeah. lives and who are their human relationship. It's just shots of people it's, it's, like it's almost random. like you know yeah, sheep moving don't. through. Exactly. Just, it's you know, like this, and maybe that's what we are. I don't know. Right. Bunch of zebras. Yeah. And say, What's, let's pick out the easy prey here. That's the <laughs> yeah. one I want. 
and, and which was fine. I had no issue with that. I'm going, okay, maybe that's what this alien, this alien race, for lack of a better term, does. I don't know. But I don't, I, the, the, the challenge I had was since I didn't have a baseline for who this alien race was. Wait, but by the way, when did it become alien race? Because you said you, you didn't know anything going in. I didn't when know did, anything so going when in. when did you decide? When, when I that, first saw that image where she, you could see her, I don't know where it was. I think it was in the black room. It was in that room. room. But, but you, was I that her really, yeah. or was I, that? Well, I don't know if it was her I thought her that was not. like another entity in the room. But, but I, 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 no I, early on, I figured, okay, she's not really human. For, right. for whatever reason, I could. it's not just a sociopath because of the whole changing and all this other stuff. There's something else going on here. So I just, I don't know why, and I'm not exactly sure when, but as soon as they started going down the, the steps and sinking in, I went, oh, she's probably an alien. Yeah. I don't know why, I mean, but that's me, where I went. And again, but again, since I don't have any baseline for whether or not they have any capacity for what we would call compassion, I don't know if it's a big leap for them. Or, or this particular alien is a big leap. Maybe maybe they're all like that. Maybe You know what and, I mean? And, so it, <laughs> and it's it's such a it's a difficult thing to ascribe to, ascribe something to, because you don't have a baseline. There's no... I, I agree with you. No, I agree. And, and even going towards Elephant Man, as we'll yeah. call him, to me, that was just... She didn't dif differentiate between handsome and not handsome. It Like, to her, that was just like... Like, she wasn't repulsed mm -hmm. by by it at all. Like she wasn't. She was. Like I don't think she was repulsed or anything by yeah, any of them. Exa I think exactly. He was the same as all the others. Oh, you live alone? Because uh, <clears throat> I think she had the criteria. They need to live alone because we. Don't, and in my, in my mind, I went to. We don't want anybody finding this out. So we don't want a family coming back saying, "Hey, where's my son?" Or yeah, whatever and, it is. So I, I think he fit the bill, and I don't think it had anything so, to do with so the compassion. other question is, did she let him go or did he escape? I think well, that's why I'm wondering, where did the compassion come? Because I, I don't know that he did anything any different no, right. or, no, you know, than anyone else. But, I don't think he did. But she but, feels, I, I feel, in, in the case of the elephant man, you know, they had that moment of, you know, have you touch, touched anybody and mm -hmm. things of that nature. And she, you know, for lack of a better term, she feels alienated in some sense. I mean, mm -hmm. in the book, you know, as you're mentioning that there's a lot of pride associated with the job, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, I couldn't see her pride in it. I think she's just carrying out her orders. Yeah. And, you know, by, by seeing the elephant man, I think she's able to relate to him and, and you know, he feels her skin and she, she's kind of wanting to become a human and this is the first person that's, um, you know, connecting on a deeper level perhaps. Interesting. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I got that, I was thinking that um, because this is the first time she does the whole thing here, do you want to touch me, all that kind of stuff. So that was different. I go, okay, that's interesting. But again, uh, the fact that she wants to relate to a human or wants to become a human, I think is that the term you use? I know. I, I, for me, I'm assigning that. Yeah, I know. And, 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 and I'm going, well, I don't, I, since I don't know this race, I have no idea if that's something that they all go through or is it just different with this particular one? So I, I didn't assign it to that only because well, I just went, okay, so she sees this this fly that wants to get out and she realized, I just traps this thing. See, and for so me, I'll the let turning it out. point, for me, the turning point is um, when she came out of the fog, which mm -hmm. But that happens question. after she lets the guy out. Well, and again, I'm not entirely. Maybe he was just the only one that knew how to swim. Like but, we don't see her. But here's her. the thing: she, yeah, she, like, he leaves, and she lives right after him. So, she's it, it's of her volition because she doesn't stop him from leaving. He true. he walks out, and she follows. Yeah, so she could have true. stopped him, but she didn't. That's true. And he's okay. he's in there now. You're right. He could have swum out. Swum I mean, swam well, out. Sorry. but yeah, because but, it was a weird thing as to how she can walk on top of it yeah and yeah the humans again, would s walk part you know, of it sink. Is, you know right. part so of we, it. we're assuming that I, I i completely assumed that she got him got him out and let him out because she followed behind so that's a that's good, where i went okay i mean part of it is uh i guess you know it begs the question um with those scenes in particular and the, the way i was interpreting and watching it mm -hmm. You know, again, forgive me, but I'm, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let in all the viewers. I thought she was a stripper initially because I went into <laughs> it with nothing. Yeah, and I thought for okay. me those scenes were very metaphorical. You uh -huh. know, she she's taking him into the darkness. We never mm -hmm. see the actual place, and then mm -hmm. they're in here. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was one big metaphor of what was happening. Right, and mm -hmm. I, I I could absolutely I, I as it was happening. I'm going, oh, this is so. Th this is some sort of um, statement on the meaningless of one night stands or something that. Uh, uh, our souls end up in a limbo or something. I, I didn't know what it was like. Okay, so whatever. I guess, I guess the question is, what, what? How much did you guys put? How much figurative, did you, and how much was it literal? Or yeah, what? for you guys, when you guys watched those I'm scenes. Four, well, the first one was interesting because you don't see anything happen other than 
it's this dark warehouse mm-hmm. she's stripping and, and you don't see the guy walking into the deep dark limbo of dad yeah. <laughs> so to speak and then it cuts to her back in the van mm-hmm. with the empty chair next with the empty seat and you're like oh okay it's like something happened or mm-hmm. it was a one night stand mm-hmm. um I, I, to me, that was one of the things that I appreciated about the movie that you just saw a little more mm-hmm. as to what's going on. Again, for me to place, and I don't even know what to like. Again, for to answer out, his question, was I, it metaphorical? I, I, I took it literally. I, I, I wish. Literal. I, I, I feel like I was poisoned knowing just a little bit about it yeah. already because I right away I started assigning. I knew I mean, I just think, I think, alien. This I started assigning. I, I, the one line, the one line that they have, an alien race, blah blah blah, and. And as soon as I knew that after I had actually, for me, after I'd seen the movie, I'm like, oh, that just gives away everything. Where was that line? It's it's a summer. It's the little summary the of summary. the movie. Oh, yeah. see, I didn't read that. Yeah. I didn't I read know. that either. Going so, into but, it. Uh, but to answer your question, when it was happening, I'm th- I was thinking metaphorically because even the beginning, when you see all the imagery and the, uh, the ovum or whatever, you, I mean, who knows what the, was that creation? I don't know what the hell I don't it was. Know what that was. But I, I, the, as soon as I saw the the round thing, I went. Well, when's that going to turn into a pupil? And then yeah. five minutes later, <laughs> yeah. after it goes through, oh, there's the pupil. But but, okay. but did you not have any hint <clears throat> about so, it? To when... answer your question, I uh, sorry. No, 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 no. Metaphorical. In, metaphorically, and then I went, oh, okay, no, it's more and more literal. Right? Because so it took it was a progression. progression. To me, there was a because before that, you had the scene, and again, visually it was great. But you had the scene where a biker guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gets gets the girl from I'm going to assume Wherever, it was yeah, a beach down, cliff yeah, whatever down an embankment who I assumed was an alien mm-hmm. and brings her back and hence the under the skin mm-hmm. you know it was that white mm-hmm. it was the the white room mm-hmm. <clears throat> and Scarlett Johansson completely nude uh, starts stripping her down and then more or less taking her identity so at that point I figured. I, I wasn't thinking stripper at that point. I'm thinking this is just odd. And being that the movie is called Under the Skin, mm-hmm. she's taking the skin of 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 this thing, whatever it is. Later on, I just again my interpretation was this was an alien that somehow died. Mm-hmm. They went to go pick up the body because they didn't want it being found. Stripped her, assumed her identity. And she was going to go out and going to the mall was finding her new identity so she can continue the job. So I, I wasn't thinking metaphorically, and I guess maybe because I knew it had something to do with an alien. Um, but that whole white scene sort of kind of, even if I didn't think it was an alien, that whole scene of her taking the clothes off of the dead mm-hmm. body wouldn't have, like, I wouldn't have associated that with. Well, I, I didn't. I didn't anything. think it was a stripper. I didn't. I wasn't sure. I didn't think it was an alien when they first brought her up. Yeah. I just thought, oh, okay, some woman that is dead, or thought it was dead because right. she, she was. There was a tear at the end. Was, so, and again, I don't know if that's uh, did, that, I know, a were, post mortem tear. Or, yeah, <laughs> or I what? started. It, it was interesting because Dimitri brought that a point to me, and I started thinking about it that way. But after I saw the Elephant Man scene, I started to think it was potentially something that she had screwed up because then I remember there was a scene with motorcycle guy where he steers Scarlett Johansson's character down and it's yeah. almost like a reprimand mm-hmm. that maybe she had screwed something up with well, maybe by bring, you, yeah, that was bringing one a of the girl th- or by I don't know what exactly I but. also thought okay the only difference there are two things that she started to engage in, with him in a different way and I thought okay that that's that's different and I thought that may be the one that may be the reason why she went back to get him because oh you know I shouldn't have I wasn't supposed to do that no that's going to do something bad or because he looked different that was the other thing that mm-hmm. was different about him maybe at some point she realized wait a minute he doesn't look like all the rest he shouldn't be in there for maybe whatever he's reason alien. for whatever reason yeah, yeah. and i go oh and it was just that when she stopped and realized and she had that look in the mirror and she was looking at that and then and i go okay maybe that's why she went back again it's all up to your own interpretation anyway because they don't really explain any of it but so let me you know okay so in some sense maybe she looked at him like it's funny you know mm-hmm. maybe she looked at him as another fellow alien because he didn't look like anybody else mm-hmm. Um, but he know, was, but he reacted the same way. I mean, so I mean, it definitely could have been a different name. But I thought the most telling point is I think it, the moment she let him out, she knew the gigs up, and that's why she had to go because uh, motorcycle gonna be boys were going to come yeah. after her. So that's why she left the van, walked through the fog, all that other stuff. But then, for me, then for me, the turning point was when she came across that other gentleman mm-hmm. outside of the diner because that At was the bus somebody, stop. 
the bus stop. He says, okay. "Hey, the bus is yeah, going to yeah, be yeah. here." Blah blah blah. The nice guy. Yeah, the nice guy. Yeah. And she, the alien. By the way, didn't think with his dick. Okay. <laughs> yes, he did. He ended up sleeping with her. Well, eventually, <laughs> not, but they didn't not. lead with well, that. But they. What do you think he brought her back for? Come on. Um. Anyway. Not buying it. Um. But she actually, for the first time, she saw like human compassion. Mm-hmm. I felt that, you know, here was someone who she was alone. He didn't know. And he wasn't treating her like, a, like prey. Mm-hmm. He was like, Oh, you're all alone. Obviously you got nowhere to go here. Let me give you some, come on, I'll, I'll feed you or whatever. And it wasn't until a little bit later on, maybe her, maybe the aliens guard had come down and, you know, hence they ended up in bed together. And then she realized, Hey, I don't have all the parts and, she continued to run. Let me, you know, uh, as we're talking about the micro, I want to, you know, to take because there's no benchmarks to kind of indicate certain certain things about, mm-hmm. you know, the genre and whatever else. You know, I think a lot of people will be influenced by what they've seen before. Sure. So the reason absolutely. why I, find, I say compassion because you know, for me, I love movies like ET and things of that nature right. where a human and an alien make a connection. <clears throat> right. But if you look at movies, let's say like Alien vs. Predator or stuff like mm-hmm. that, that's a little bit more like, hey, aliens are the bad guy, mm-hmm. you know. So I'm I'm kind of uh, interested interested in. Well, it was a- hard not for me not to see her as. I don't I, I don't know that I think thought of her as a bad guy, but obviously she was, the people were no longer being because of her. So I had a hard <laughs> time seeing her as a good guy when people were their existence was negated because of her. Right. But you can look at it, the great, you know, uh, the greater purpose of life. You know, I mean, these guys' existence is meaningless to begin with. They have mm-hmm. nothing. To they who? have no but. I mean, to the greater good. I don't know the creator, the eye in the beginning. But not to the person who's getting killed. Yeah, <laughs> they're but like, they're the only one that would miss them. Who would miss them? Well, Nobody. because well, but there was one guy who's like, I love being by myself. Yeah. I love being alone. He goes, it's great. I make all my decisions. I do whatever I want. Mm-hmm. Like he seemed to be pretty happy. In the state that he was in, he had a job, like. And who's to say that, that life isn't re- meaningful for him? Right. Well, he seemed that it was pretty meaningful to him. It was. I'm not yeah. saying it is or it isn't. I'm oh, saying okay. the movie says it is not. Well, sure. From the, from from an alien's perspective, that, that and this is a food source for him. Is yeah. Who cares what whether or not? I mean, that's the same way we feel about our food. We don't give a crap if a cow has a good life. <laughs> that's a good burger, right? <laughs> right. So I mean, it's no different from we do to that to a quote lesser race. Sure. I'm a vegetarian. So am I. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> we're we're above. I that. care. It's no, not I, a lesser race. I, I, that, uh, no, it's the same thing. It's the same. It's I do. Cool. As I you guys are talking about the people that she picked up, I do wonder because a lot's made about the idea that it was hidden cameras and things like that. Mm-hmm. But I, by my count, there's only really two people like asking for directions that could have been. No, there was like what five. There was you think lot. there was that many? Yeah. Oh, there there was far too many for me. That 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 was bored the crap out of me. I just was there. Did for anyone? Did any of the ones who got in the car actually? Because because it, it seemed like all the ones that got in the car, she ended up taking I think into that, well, the. There's four that actually got in the car, if I remember correctly. Okay. Yeah, we because only there... saw three of them die. The... Okay, so maybe one of so them was uh, man, the short actual... guy, the well, first guy, and they and did make it a more. point that that one of the people that approached her in the car, mm. she said, "Oh, do you live alone?" He goes, "No, I'm going home to my family." She yeah. goes, "Oh, okay," and then yeah. she drove off. Yeah. I mean, once so, once once they were kind of <clears throat> talked into being part mm-hmm. of the movie, you know, it was very explicitly, uh, the quote is, um, talk through what extremes they would have to go if they agreed to take part in the film once they understood what we were doing. Right. Oh, so well, you're telling me that the people that she picked up actually became the actors in those scenes? Did. I don't know if they were Oh, well, that's, that's, I figured they, those had to be, that's interesting. That's, I, that's, that's wild if that's the case. Yeah. I, I didn't, I mean, I, I, I read that afterwards only this morning when uh, I went, oh, how, what are other people thinking about this? I didn't know that they shot with hidden camera. Uh, I, I I thought, okay, that's fine. It didn't really enhance or hurt the movie for me because uh, cinematography of it, I was kind of like, eh. We were just so in that van for so long mm. and the same thing happening. For me, it was just way too long. I had too many shots of looking at her within the reflection of the rear view mirror, I'm going, and, and hanging on it for over a minute, going, okay, 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 got it, got yeah. it, got but it. Thing, I, think, I think because people are so conditioned, th- this goes against everything people are typically conditioned, right? Mm-hmm. So we're talking about how pe- we're kind of conditioned to interpret alien movies in a mm-hmm. certain way because it explains the plot for the most sure. part. And we're conditioned to kind of faster cuts and things of that nature. And so yeah. in terms of the progression of this, it showed the same overall in moments and incidents mm-hmm. 
with very slight change in mm -hmm. each of them until you got to a certain climax mm -hmm. and then everything shifted right and and that's the thing and, and i and i'm not one for fast cutting and it's not like i love that i i'm just it to me got boring and and you know and it, you wouldn't be yeah you have a lot of people in your camp too yeah, yeah i'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm not know, I, I think, yeah and i and i know a lot of people know oh, it's amazing to hang on i'm going well and goody for you i'm glad that that you enjoy that part of it but for me it was like okay i get it it's the same deal and and even and i wouldn't do that right away i mean i was taking the movie as it came to me and then after a while i was going okay we we're here for a very long time and and as i'm watching it i'm going wow that's interesting okay all right i'll wait when you're ready uh we'll move on and then <laughs> while i'm waiting i'm thinking of all the other things i'm no longer in the story i'm no longer in the movie I no longer, and then when we start getting uh, different information, I'm going, oh, okay, we're back? Great. All right. Let's well, move let me on. ask you this. Uh, you know, um, there, there's a movie. Yeah. I don't, uh, Ian kind of, I know he's seen at least the first 20 minutes, but maybe you guys kind of have seen it. It's called uh, Spring, Summer, uh, Fall, Winter, and Spring Again. And it's, 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 a, it's a Korean movie. It's about two hours, and there's like four lines of dialogue. But it's very much, you know, about this child kind of growing up, right? It's symbolic mm -hmm. of spring, summer, blah, blah. Got it. And, again, it, it plays very visually, and some of the shots are held longer. Now, there's yeah. not, there's a little bit less to interpret mm -hmm. <laughs> in that movie, as Ian can attest to. But, I don't know, they, they, for the people that like it, I think there's a certain... Because, you know what, it does kind of... For you, you kind of went to the on board of it, but it allows that m moment of thinking while you're watching the movie. It's yeah, a, I, and I was thinking, and then I was <clears> thinking about the movie, and I was really trying to, you know, because it was great. You're, you're you're trying to figure out, or, or at least experience what she's experiencing, and yet you can't because, you, first of all, you don't even know she's human, and if you do think she's human, it looks like she's just sitting there because she's not doing anything. And then well, you, you, you like bring something to observing it. the mind of a stripper and like mm. you're very, uh, yeah and you're and I get that the audience is bringing to it whatever they want or wherever they are and, right. and that, for that I think that's fine and interesting but after a while I went yeah okay I'm done with it now but, you know but but it, but it wasn't like I because I hate this idea I'm trying to explain this and I don't know how to it's not like I was going come on come on let's go move move because I'm not doing that and right. I don't like movies that do that but after a while it just felt so self indulgent. And I'm going, oh, you know, it's like, look, I'm an amazing auteur. I'm well, going, no, it's, it's, you're boring the shit out of me. Right. Well, no, it, and it's interesting because pretentious was one of the words I, I could see, people could easily call this pretentious. And I'm not I I don't know what the argument necessarily against that is now. But I found this article <clears throat> since we were talking about the, the visual and according to the director, um, abstract on the surface and elusive to many, which is funny. What's so remarkable about the movie is that because it's mostly told through images, it's actually pretty straightforward and linear. Mm -hmm. This is a movie you could arguably watch with the sound off and still understand the narrative. Then the director goes on saying, there is a rigorous logic as far as its architecture. Uh, there are rigorous choices, but I think maybe the top layer of the film isn't revealing those choices necessarily, but they're there. Mm -hmm. And and again, he, perp you know, whether you like that or not, you know, I, yeah, I mean, he purposely made this movie and he so, got yeah, exactly you, you, what he wanted it out of it. Uh, and, and I think as I was watching it, I went. This guy is making the movie he wants to make. He, makes, he wants to make. I, I don't think he's interested in whether or not it's a widely accepted movie. I don't. I don't think that's. W w and I, I may be but wrong. I, th on this. I, I have not up, read anything. But. I think it's seen some of those the architecture, like you say, yeah. seen the actual beams a little yeah. bit, like yeah. so exposing might have made for a better, you know, keeping the visual style and, yeah. and some of the. Pacing, and again, I don't. But, I'm glad he did it. I mean, I'm glad mm -hmm. he made the movie he wanted and stuff like that. Yeah. And and I think people will ascribe to it all these things and more, whatever they're going through. They, they, will, they, they have to fill in the pieces which is fine i think that's great yeah uh, i but here's the part of it is that you know we, in a sense you have to decide what it is for you right. which is fine but i already know how i feel about alienation i already know how i feel about aliens and sci-fi and other alienation and, was a pretty it, decent movie yeah exactly but what i was the part that i was going to yeah that's great i already know what i think about that what is that you think about it because right. i still don't know what well, he thinks and it's about funny it. because it's he goes on and says, and I do care about ambiguity in a film, mm -hmm. of course, but you have to have, uh, but you have to own your own ambiguity. You have to understand what it is, which is great, but at least clue me in. Like, if you're the creator of this, you know, 
fine. You're then you're saying, well, I'm smarter than you. I have my own ambiguity, but you got to figure it out. And I'm like, well, just give me a clue or something. But you know, and I'm quite hopeful that the logic to understanding the movie is there. Uh, if it's not necessarily communicated in the first viewing quite as directly as some would like. Mm-hmm. Here's what, I mean, no, it's so, interesting that your point, what, tell me what you think about it, because that is my initial reaction when I see a, a, a film like this sometimes, but there's, I mean, most films are like, I, you know, and I think, I, think it's, I think it's a brave to make a film sometimes that asks questions, you know, to, to say I don't have all the... Here's a yeah. film that's purely asking questions, you know, right. rather than, and than I, telling you something. I agree with you. I like that, too. But, I think I appreciate that. Yeah. I, I, and, and, you know, that's which is why I appreciate the fact that he made the film and, and why I think that many people will enjoy it. I'm just not a fan of it just because, for me, uh, I guess, I, I don't... And I, don't, I haven't put this part into words because I just saw it last night, but... Yeah. I went, yeah, okay, but I still don't think I know this director any better, and I and I've find I kind of feel left out on that. I wanted to know him a little better or his take on this a little bit better, and I, you know, it's not like I agree with the ambiguity. I like, you know, I don't like things wrapped up in a bow. I don't like things spoon fed, all that kind of stuff. But I still don't think I. I think he's more elusive than the film is, and in some sense, I think a lot of the film is is wasted because there's an opportunity that that he didn't. Uh, yeah. Well, you realize there's certain techniques, right? Um, and, and it's good that you brought that up, Dimitri, because I can kind of follow up on that. That he right. made, you know, you're talking about. I, I, he hoped there's some sort of semblance of logic, right? Right. So, I mean, there's 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 hints, but you have to interpret them. For example, um, with with the people, you know, they have a very thick Scottish accent. Mm-hmm. I couldn't understand. Yeah, for yeah there was a lot. <laughs> I think partly that's because yeah. of the tech, you know, if, if you're just using hidden cameras mm-hmm. on right. a car, you don't have the really, best sound quality. You're not going to, yeah. but it also adds to the fact of like, well, who cares? Yeah, it doesn't to really matter. Her, yeah. They're like aliens because they could be speaking gibberish. Exactly. Right. So, you know, and as long as they say like, you know, you almost listen for very specific words. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm alone. Well, if you remember in the beginning, yeah. she's just practicing, you know, can hear her saying vowel sounds yeah. and, and, and making and, 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 and doing all that. And that to me was just her figuring out language. So for her, it could all be about the vibration that somebody's sending forth. Mm. It doesn't really matter the words. It's kind of like a, a, a music in a way. You don't have to have lyrics sometimes. You understand what the person or uh, the music is conveying rather without lyrics. So that's where I was going. And I have a friend of mine who's Scottish. And half the time I can't understand him. So, but I think I understand him. I think I understood the Scottish better than most people. But even me, I was going, uh, okay, I don't, what? I have no idea what that yeah. was. And then, you know, again, the great part is you didn't need to. Yeah, you no. didn't need to. No, and, and you, yeah, there were key words. And um, really all you need, did you, he get in the van or not? That's pretty much yeah. all you need to know. Yeah. But again, that's, that's the technique in which you then are left to interpret it. Okay, you know, by not being able to understand them and her practicing, like, is it is it a matter of that you know they're just prey or is she trying to understand them by practicing her vowels i don't think i think she understood him fine i just think we as an audience that don't know that dialect understood her but she's i don't think she had a problem no i don't think so either does scotland hate us <laughs> no no no, just for, for just for making fun of that and then not being yeah. able to just. I that. think I love well, the accent. Are you kidding me? Yeah, That's no, amazing. the accent was fine. Right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know. If it's Scottish, it's crap. So, um, you know, it, no, I mean, I do think that she understood who yeah. she was picking up on, because um, she adjusted her behavior when, whenever you know, she was clearly had an agenda with every guy, to right. and it was you know you could almost check off okay, and and as soon as one of those didn't get checked off, she was on to something else because it didn't fulf- meet the criteria. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, let's also talk about you know the use of lights and darks and you know mm-hmm. we we talked about the cinematography for you know just the mostly dark by the way <laughs> most yes indeed yeah, actually yeah. um but again that's why that's why initially for me in the movie well you open up with that scene where mm-hmm. you're you're basically just using black and white right yeah. mm-hmm. um and then as she's taking all these guys in you know they enter the door but we don't see inside the door so no. it's it's yeah. a, it's a very um what do they call that uh Negative space. I don't know what you. I don't know what you. No F F range. Oh, Remember, oh, right. F stop. Yeah, 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 yeah F stop yeah. range. Right. You know what I mean. So it's very low. A, a mm-hmm. higher, higher range in F stops means yeah. that you know you get More brights light. and and darks. Mm-hmm. This is just you. You, you have you such see, limited yeah. F stop space that if it's if it's black, it's black. Yeah. Yeah. And she takes them right in, and then you know they're. 
they're consumed, and obviously that's a very deliberate choice. Yeah. It reminded me of like a, a Lars von Trier set. It was just like this big black yeah, warehouse, and you just walk. Uh, you know, people were just walking in. Yeah, that's the thing. Like there was, you have to make the leap that she, in one way, shape, or the alien, in one way, shape, or form, uh, hypnotized or did something mm-hmm. to these people because wouldn't anybody sort of rational go? Hey, turn on the lights. Like, where am I? Like, what the hell well, is this? And why, that, why am I going to keep on re- walking? Why part, am I sinking? Exactly. And partly, <clears throat> metaphoric, why I went to the metaphorical is it didn't look like that big of a house. Just right. Know, yeah. It's like a TARDIS. Yeah, exactly. Bigger Proxemic on the inside, size. It's like, how the, the hell did they create that thing? Right. So, which is the Svengali thing that we've been talking about. Not only does she convince them to, to go into this ultimate blackness, but she convinces them e- either in, in some sort of. I don't know, mind screw up. Whatever. Well, didn't I mean? Didn't the walking. way that they yeah. were walking seem yeah. manipulated? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so yeah, there must yeah. have been. And, yeah. and she you says the whole thing about follow me, look yeah. at me, and all this other stuff. So it seemed like some sort of trance-like thing. And, yeah. And filmically, you had you had the music, which was very poetic, and you know, it was it was poetic. <laughs> Marissa, play that music. You mean it was dystopic it was, and atonal, yeah. jarring, and annoying, like, and you know, physically actually painful now? sometimes. There we go. Yeah. But it's okay. Well, it's it's poetic and so, where where you're kind of where as an audience we're not lull, we're kind of above it where we're like this is really haunting and creepy. Mm-hmm. But if kind of put in the perspective of those men, it's kind there of there is a lulling. You're right. There is a lulling element. Like a too. siren. Although, <laughs> like a siren. You know, you smashed on the rock. I, I, yeah, sort of. But I mean, but, <laughs> but that's I didn't mean actual. You know, emergency siren. Oh, that's that, 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 <laughs> <laughs> the mythical sirens. Yes. But it, honestly, there were there were a couple of times when that music was so painful. And right right now, could you please turn it off? I'm getting a migraine. <laughs> Is it really? It, but, so I know I, you guys are saying it's lulling, to you and, and I understand that part of it, but it really hurt my head. Really? I yeah, mean, it, it was, was giving me a migraine. To me, it was sort of, it was a little bit mesmerizing, uh, you know, tonally as to how it was. But then again, as mesmerizing as it was, it was a cue that, Something's not right. Yeah, here. Yeah, something's for off. Sure. Yeah, out of yeah. sync. Yeah, easily. Something discordant. Not, I mean, yeah. something's can't. not right. Yeah. And had I been one of the, you know, one of those males, and mm-hmm. that came on, I would have been. Yeah, but I don't. I, I mean, yeah, if, <laughs> if they could hear it, who knows? Yeah. If they're in a I started to feel like for the the shot, the orange shot I told you about, that, the, the, where it's like kind of kaleidoscopy, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. kind of moves into her mm-hmm. pictures, yeah. slow, like. That that was hypnotic. I, that was incredible, and I, I don't know. Maybe it kind of put you in their position of like being mm-hmm. lulled into this film that I'm having these weird reactions to, where I'm like, "Ah, oh, my boy, am I this?" And then, and then so slowly, that image really like lulled me into mm-hmm. something. It was pretty wild. What I like about it, every one of these elements has to work because it, it it's on the line of um, where it could be either really <laughs> laughable or it works. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, and I, th- I think most people, if they don't know how to interpret it, um, and I, I think we're not necessarily part of that group, if they don't know how to interpret this movie, they have to go to the humor and just make fun right. of it. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, which you could. Um, and I, I, I honestly think I was in the middle because I didn't find it laughable. It could have been easily, but and it, and it, and it's not like I, I, I think I understood it for the most part. Obviously, there's so much left up for interpretation. Who knows what? I, I since I haven't read anything about what the director or writer were intending, I have no idea if I received the received it the way they intended it or not right. well it's but i did also didn't find it genius and i felt it was very disjointed in the sense of it, it, it some things worked some things didn't work so in that sense it was it was kind of like eh. well part of you know you, you speak to the intent of the writers and the director um there's obviously a script's going to go through drafts and things sure. are going to change right Always. but i think i think with this the draft changes happened because they were trying to figure out how to do it and what the meaning that they were trying to say was mm-hmm. and typically you don't do that with a script that, you know you, you you know what i mean john you're telling more of a narrative rather than what you're yes. not doing themes you're not you know it's really hard to like write well, let's say with so. like uh using uh serial buddies adventures mm-hmm. of serial buddies which is a movie we worked on as an example you know you try to change up okay uh how do we get them to meet faster you know because mm-hmm. it's, it's a buddy comedy movie right um where does the you know do we show more of the villain or we do we kind of just hide him mm-hmm. um and things of that nature so you're kind of changing to make it 100 percent work whereas this is like what do i really want to say about aliens okay well this draft is going to yeah. say this about aliens you know what i kind of like aliens this week let me rewrite <laughs> the draft a little bit to uh-huh. did that make sense where totally everything shifts with a draft yeah absolutely i mean it happens a lot 
You know? so. That'd be it'd be an interesting edit room to be in. You know, yeah, I wonder be, like yeah. what well, they're if yeah, they're just I, like if they're beating it out like a normal like oh we we this art you know in here we got to hit this right. Or if they're just and because you're not going to, you're not really interested in the in the narrative as much as you are other things. I would think that would be a fascinating seat to be in. Is the editing yeah. are we creating the image? Uh, is the image conveying what we want? Is there logic there? And what's the response? What how what's it evoking in people? I mean, and, that, that well, thing and again, according according to the director from from what we talked about earlier was that he had a very, even though he had a very logistic sense mm -hmm. in, in cutting the film and putting the, mm -hmm. the film, you know, he, he admits about the ambiguity, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but he said, you know, it, there's logic to it if you pay attention to it. But sure, I'll maybe yeah. seeing it again. But you have to, I, I with, see what I logic, like about but, it is you have to make the logic because it's part movie, part documentary. In that sense, well, if they're using hidden cameras, you know. No, I agree with you. I'm sure. just—I hadn't thought about that. That's yeah, very interesting. You know, I. where you have to now, you have to piece together. Okay, mm -hmm. you know, the progressions of okay, how are we going to do it? Which moments are we going to select? And how, you know, mm -hmm. which part of it is going to go first? Which right. part of it is going to be the next progression, etc. Well, also, but in editing, I mean, a lot of it is taking a scene and saying, you know, each scene is supposed to either Build, further usually, the plot yeah. and, and, and vote, like developed. this is what we're supposed to be feeling during this right. scene mm -hmm. so we could set up for this but when there's none of that i do yeah like there, there weren't really scenes to break up and say this is what i want them to take from this mm -hmm. scene so i yeah it's, it and kind even of if, begs and, and if that's even what their purpose or did they did they even consider that like this is what i want them to take or did he or was he going I, it doesn't matter what they take this is it is it is as it is and whatever they assign it is fine that's it. Well, yeah, I, I mean, mean who knows? That's, that's the right, thing. Right. I, I don't know, and I'm gonna ha and and what is what is probably what some people might think of the geniuses is, is, is that it it requires further right. study and analysis, and I'm going, yeah, but I no, I wanted to see it in the movie. You know, what's interesting too, though, is that most every article I was reading about this movie and the director, mm -hmm. he hated being asked questions. He got uncomfortable mm -hmm. when asked, "What's the meaning of this?" Mm -hmm. It's like he would almost. He would never give a clear answer. He would talk about the ambiguity. And I just found that, like, so, I don't know. Like, I don't think, I don't think on the Blu-ray there'll be a commentary. Well, and, you know, and, and, and again, a lot of artists don't want to <clears throat> talk about their, they don't, sometimes they don't even know what the meaning of yeah. it is. I'm not saying he doesn't, but it, it, it doesn't matter right. to them. It's, yeah. It is what it is. It's the art piece, and you can either take it or not, whatever. Now, um, another article that I had found, this was on Pitchfork, which is a music uh, music magazine. Uh, online and they talked about the editing and the music and apparently he cuts them he cut the movie dry with mm -hmm. no soundtrack uh, in mind and he gave it over okay. to uh, I believe it's um, Mika Levi mm -hmm. who was the uh, composer now <clears throat> she was like honestly when it was finished it felt like it was only because somebody in charge said that it had to be <laughs> she was when I got the be. film yeah, so, <laughs> and, so she and, did <laughs> Well, Isn't that a great quote? You, you and I are both proponents of making sure that the edit works without the music, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a when, it's with a editing. Yeah. yeah, you can make any see. You know, people. My advice to editors is make it work without because as soon as you know, most people like to edit to a beat and things mm -hmm. like that. If you don't have that natural beat, mm -hmm. sorry, you're not a great, good editor. No, I um, agree. And yes, any music you put in is automatically going to lift, and you're like, "Oh, this scene is perfect." Yeah. When in but, fact, but it, it probably has but a lot of But if it stands on its own without any, uh, you know, bolstering from music, it's pretty good. Yeah. So that's anyway. That's what, well, that's what we we that's our philosophy. Interesting, because I mean, I'll go back to the to Jaws mm -hmm. when execs first saw Jaws with no music, mm -hmm. they didn't think it was that scary. I agree. And with then you. they added, the, you know, even I, with I'm Werner not, Fields. I'm saying like, what I, I I'm, yeah. actually I think you're making my point yeah. is that music can elevate anything. Sure. I mean, it can be, but if it you, you know it's really good if you don't right. need the music. But and then the music is just really enhancement, which yeah. is great. Yeah. Well, she goes on. Um, she says I like the way when when she did the music, uh, and it goes to your point and how it bothered you. She goes, I like the way that it perverts your comfort and your reality. Mm -hmm. So and that's exactly totally what that movie. Did. It perverted your comfort because you Perver yeah absolutely because I get a migraine. <laughs> I don't know if that's the intention, but yeah. So. Um, let's talk about let's talk about Scarlett Johansson specifically since mm -hmm. she's the only real. I mean, you could consider the biker guy, but yeah. we don't even really. Well, you know, let's say the the guy she met on uh, at the bus stop. The bus stop. In you know, of course. <clears> but are they our actors? Last actors? Wasn't he an actor? I believe he's an actor. I think he was one of the only ones. I don't even know. Oh, okay. I don't know. That's what I, I, right. I, I, I thought I read this morning. I would have to say our, that the family, they 
they couldn't have filmed the family drowning. They yes. would have had to have been actors and yeah. and maybe, but you know, I mean, I don't know who anybody but else. But there's certainly, I mean, I mean, if nothing else, it's not like you know how sometimes mm-hmm. uh, they put like top British actors right. into you know, and this is an, obviously an, an American movie, but some, in American movies and, and us as an American audience, we don't know who they are, but they're right. big. Certainly, the baby and 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 the guy on the beach aren't big time actors over in Scotland. No, unless anybody wants to counter that right now. No, I'm actually because I if have not. It's the... fact. <laughs> if no one has an argument, there, it's, then, then it's it gospel. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at uh, IMDb. So, but you wanted to talk about... I wanted to talk be, because, you know, again, for the most part, it is just Scarlett Johansson mm-hmm. as the actor. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, before we really talk about her and her choices, other people considered were Eva Green. You know, um, We obviously mm-hmm. just saw her in 300 Rise of Empire. Megan Fox, you can see in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. January Jones from Mad Men. Olivia Wilde. Amanda uh, Seyfried. Blake Lively and Jessica Biel. Any of those choices you think? I want to see this movie with Megan Fox. I wonder what <laughs> that movie would look like. You know what it's It'd called? Be, it's, what? Called, um, it's called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? No, it's not <laughs> yeah. that. Uh, Jennifer's Body, it's called. Oh. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's what it's called. Did anybody, well, I, since you mentioned another, did anybody think of the movie Species while yeah. they were watching this? Yeah. No. Sure. So. Um, <laughs> any, but yeah, who, so, who else could have carried it other than let's say Chris Carlos well, I think, this list? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't, let's see of the ones you named offhand. I'm sure Olivia Wilde would have had a pretty Olivia good Wilde. Show I think could have been good. Um, I'm gonna say I think Eva after after seeing uh, Eva Eva Green in mm-hmm. 300 Rise of an Empire, I think she could have done a phenomenal yeah job with this. It would have been a different interpretation. I'm not sure if it's. I don't know that it's that difficult of a task. I mean, in the first part, I mean, I, if you're an alien, first of all. Uh, again, to those who know it's an alien, we don't know what that alien, uh, their their behavior is. So we, how we stay, whether or not you did a good job or a bad job. Uh, John, as an actor, I'm curious. Yeah. Like, if you were playing this role, like, what would you need from the director to go in, and like, what what would you have to know narratively for it to make sense? What would you need to know as a character well, for it to make the sense? The same that every actor is. Well, what what's my <laughs> the whole, literally what is my motivation? Is that yeah? yeah. Well, yeah, because you you she clearly has an agenda. She should know uh, at at whatever level that this is why I'm doing this. I mean, the audience right. doesn't have to know that, but she's playing that. <clears throat> so, uh, although we may not know why she's picking out who she's picking out and, and what questions are evoking what responses which create different responses from her, she should have all that knowledge. So awareness. even without a clear cu- a idea of the whole picture, the big their bigger picture, they don't they, need to know the big picture. I just need to know why, why am I doing, why am I doing this right now. I don't now. need the whole right. the whole thing. In fact, right. there there are many actors myself included. Sometimes we don't want to know what other we don't want to know those things because then that gives us an awareness that we shouldn't have. So you and don't then, even need to understand the film, really. Not necessarily. Like you, yeah, no, yeah. no. Yeah. I, I just, I, as if I'm acting, I'm serving whatever oh. the story is, or whatever the director's trying to do. And there are times when you don't want to know certain things because that gives you knowledge or awareness of something that it might find itself into your performance, and you, it, you shouldn't be aware of that. Yeah. Your character doesn't know that, so you shouldn't. But, but you would have read sometimes. the script beforehand. Yes. Well, and that's my follow-up question. I'm curious. So, as an actor, what? Do well, you let's think face it. it yeah. None, in Woody Allen movies, the actors don't get the script; they get their sides. Yeah. So they don't know right. the whole story. So anyway, that's it. Well, I guess. Well, my follow-up question is: an actor to take a role like this, or or something else, where where you don't have the full the story. Like what? I mean, how big a leap is that? I guess you have to trust you the director. Trust your director. Right? So that's and, more than anything. And the conversations yeah. are okay. What is it you're going for, and and how do you want to? How do you hope to achieve that? Because I think if if it were me, I, the question is okay. I'd want to know is what is it we're trying to achieve here? What we're trying to so that I could know how I want how to participate, and whether or not I could actually paint with the color that the director wants. Right. Yeah. Because if it's really if I don't think I can get there, I don't want to say yes to it. Because well, without I'm, knowing specifically what yeah. it, it seemed like she Only did it. I, I want to be able yeah. to serve the project well. Absolutely. I mean, and I would want it to scare me and stretch me and all those other things. But if I, if I ultimately, you know, this is this, I know that this is not right for me, and right. I would be a detriment to it. So I think you yeah. should get someone else. And, well, I mean, my perspective of Scarlett Johansson's performance is that for me, <clears throat> this is a very bold role for her to take. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know coming off of Avengers, Captain America, her, by doing the voice in her. But we're talking about movies that are coming out right now. That's not when she necessarily filmed it. True, but she can have literally a pick of whatever she wants to do. And 
this role, she literally had to, well, she had to strip down. I mean, that literally mm-hmm. and figuratively because she had to go and try to be as anonymous mm-hmm. and throw herself into a crowd of people and try to pick people up. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> now, with there was no script there. She just, mm-hmm. that's what her job was. Well, and I, 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 are, I, are there, there scenes, was a script there to some degree because you know the certain kinds of questions you have to ask anyway. Right. So, but but I agree. There's some improv. But you but you gotta have okay. I have to hit these beats, otherwise this scene is gonna work anyway. Because me as the alien, I know I have to say certain things because right. that's my agenda. Sure, but but she couldn't be Scarlett Johansson no. in these. You know, not. she had to. Well, you know, go under heavy disguise. Now, I think that it's funny. Mm-hmm. I would like the outtakes in which. Because there were a handful of people that recognized her. I would imagine, yeah. And I would have liked oh, to have seen those. Yeah, like, so hey, are you, are you doing here in Glasgow? Johansson? Absolutely, you can give me a ride home. Exactly. <laughs> you want to come on in and say hey to the kids? <laughs> but but going back to the performance, I'm, I'm just thinking about it. And I'm going, well, you know, again, in the beginning, you're just a tablet rasa. We don't know if she's doing good performance or bad performance because we have no idea. Again, we don't have a, any kind of baseline for what this particular alien being does, does not do well how they behave normally, or is she being way outside her comfort zone? We don't have any idea. We, all we know, we have to take it with face value because we don't know that under the skin is something else. She's just a human being who looks kind of dispassionate and kind of uh, removed and alienated to some degree, and she does that well because, you know, there isn't much. She's not really playing anything until she engages with somebody. Other than that, sure. she's just kind of observing. Sure. Which is what you would expect her to do because... She's yeah. an alien and is trying to figure out the race. Let me ask the this humans. because I know that they did try to in picking and in, 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 in the casting process, they didn't want to pick somebody. They were going the Richard Donner Superman. They didn't want to pick somebody who mm. would be so 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 recognizable. Right. Like, did you immediately go, "Hey, that's Scarlett Johansson"? I mean, I, I knew it was Scarlett yeah. Johansson going in, mm-hmm. but it didn't detract from the movie. Didn't the track from the movie, but there's no way I didn't think. Oh, this is not Scarlett Johansson. I don't know. I don't know that there's any actress more so that you could do that with than. I mean, arguably, right now with yeah. Avengers, she's kind of right. the bigger. I mean, yeah. So, but let's face it. I, mean, I don't think she. To Phil's point, it was whenever it was shot was ten years ago or whatever it was. I mean, I, ten years she to wasn't make, but not six as well yeah. known then. Uh, certainly not in yeah. Scotland. True, I would imagine since Avengers, people would recognize her. But yeah. I'm sure when it was shot, it was much more. Uh, easy for them to pass off that this is just an anonymous. Yeah, well, listen, I, I, think... I, I just think it's another step. I mean, again, when we talked last year, she mm-hmm. was in, um, uh, uh, she was in that p- the, the, the porn movie, Don Juan. Uh, Don, uh, Don, no, John. Don, Don, Don John. John. She was in that movie, which right. is a small independent Joseph Gordon Levitt's movie. Mm-hmm. She did a really good job in that. Uh, again, her voice in her really makes, you know, that AI you know, experience and come to life. So she brought the AI to life in that, you know, of course the Avengers, but in here we see another turn. I mean, again, I think for her to, to accept the role, I think it's very brave, uh, especially when she is right now, she can pretty much take anything she wants, but she continues to make bold choices. Uh, Did I you guys see the preview? That we saw the preview for the night. New thing she's in at the beginning. Oh yeah, of Lucy. It. Lucy. I, I'm yeah. probably going to be proven wrong, but I think that looked awesome. Yeah. No, it did. I yeah. have to say, it look, it's it it's a he's like a, it's, it's a Luke Besson. Well, you know, it's, it's funny it's a Luke because Besson movie. And oh well, they, most recently he just has not had a. Well, good it's run. interesting because I saw, but, but um, the trailer is capable. He's certainly. I saw Under the Skin, and then later on I saw Transcendence, and for the trailers of Transcendence, I saw Lucy and went. Damn, I wish I'd seen that. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, let's talk about, uh, uh, where, where, you know, the Jonathan Glazer, in terms of before we kind of get it, how, to, how it was received and marketed and all that, where does this put his kind of legacy? You know, he's got sexy beasts, he's got birth, and now he's got under the skin. Well, I have to, fair disclosure, uh, full disclosure, I didn't see uh, birth. I saw. I didn't see beast. birth. So, I only saw sexy beasts. I saw birth. Yeah. I didn't see sexy beasts. Okay. Beast. Okay, okay. so we fill out We fill mm-hmm. out in some yeah. sort of way. <laughs> sexy beast. did you guys love it? I, I enjoyed it. It's a it. great movie. It's I very linear. It. You don't have to, there's nothing really, in, there's no ambiguity in that movie. Mm-hmm. It's and just it's the very, comedy between great. Ben Kingsley oh and Anne. Like, yeah. That's yeah. what makes the movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And then finally, you know, for those for those of you who aren't aware, it's basically the typical Winston, like one Winston. last job movie. Yeah, 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 exactly. And then yeah, hey, you know, uh, spoiler, but it's every one last job movie. Yeah. He takes the job. Yeah, right. But it's how how he gets the job, and Ben Kingsley's trying to convince <laughs> yeah. him that's the real gold in that movie. Right, right. Mm-hmm. 
Very much different than this. Then very Ben much. Kingsley's amazing in it. Uh, so talk about bir- birth. But I saw it in the theaters. Nicole I don't Kidman. remember. I mean, that was. I don't know. What As year opposed that to came where, where would you long... want to see it? Your iPad? What? No, meaning it was a long time ago that I okay, saw. Okay, so what do you take but, uh, away from it, though? I took away that it it had more in common. I I assume with this than Sexy Beast did. Okay. Um, that's what, that's it was, what I read yeah. yeah, this morning when I was reading that. Yeah, it was it was it a was, pretty bizarre film. Yeah, for sure. But they but, they also said Nicole Kidman did a really uh, interesting job. I don't absolutely. Remember, yeah, than, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, long long shots of you know of of the guy running at the beginning. You know, you sit with that for a long time. And it's very I, I remember that film, specifically. By the, way. the guy, he's he's going on like a job, and what, you're basically what, what on him for a can, marathon. What, you sit with him, can I ask, and he runs his marathon, and then the movie the starts. What is the purpose of those? Like, when he does the long shots, you know, I, honestly, I, I'm just asking, what's that? To I mean, here's the, the, these long, long shots, long takes, and we're going okay, and you, you have to watch your walk all the way, out, or the driving all yeah. the way out. All the way to the address. What what is that supposed to convey or evoke? Or is there a what what is the purpose of? It? From a producer standpoint, it's cheaper. Well, because okay. it's like okay, we gotta we gotta show a minute of on screen time. Yeah. If you film a minute of somebody just an, walking, there's but, our minute. But let's say well, uh, under but I'm under the scheme was an hour forty seven. It could yeah. easily have been an hour, an hour and a half. Did you guys there there was an interesting point to that was did anybody how did you feel at the beginning he he was he's held on black. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Lars von Trier just did it in Infomaniac, actually, mm-hmm. but I think even longer. Mm-hmm. But on this, he held black for a long time before he went to in, in the film. And that that makes me think about those other long shots, mm-hmm. like especially when you see it in the theater. I, I don't know if that's okay, am exactly... I stretching this, but it maybe yeah. because of Noah, I'm kind of coming into it. You know, at first there was darkness, then there was light. No, but I think that has something to do with it. I mean, let's face it: there's so much of the beginning. I mean, you could make the argument that's a creation scene. All that it, there's the ovum, there's light, there's all all kinds of imagery, or whatever you could say that she's being born right yeah. there, and then yeah. it, you know, and then the eye. I looked at it as a pen light <laughs> camera going into yeah. its casing. Yeah, and you could, you, but, and and you can make <laughs> equally as uh, compelling arguments for the contrary. <laughs> but <clears throat> uh, one one line for one big question for me: Does anybody know how? But how really, the, it's just about saying nobody's going to give me. An, it's just about saving money. No, I don't no, think that's. Not, <laughs> I don't think that's the real answer. Well, in okay. Sexy Beast, I don't remember him using. It's been a long time since it's, I've seen it's that. It's got movie. some long scenes. My, my, I mean, I, I'd imagine that if if you ask him, it goes back to that editing yeah. question. I, I, I imagine when those things are happening, he's pasted in a way in his mind. There's something he wants you to that's sit a, with in that. That's moment, what I'm wondering. You know, you know and because and as I'm watching, I'm going, okay, he wants me to hang here and just just take this in. And then it keeps going and he keeps going. And I'm wondering if he's going, no, no, I want it to go longer because I want, I want, you know, part of that uncomfortable. I want them to be uncomfortable. I want them to, uh, uh, or I'm just. No, that's what, what it is. It, it is well, that's it how is I feel. A, that, that's why I brought factor. up the black. I mean, yeah. when you sit in a theater and it's pitch black and nothing's happening with other yeah. people, there's a certain amount of discomfort you experience. And, you and especially watching, you know, a movie like this where, you know, again, if, if you're watching the first couple of scenes and you don't know if it's a metaphor mm-hmm. and if it's very sexual and you're yeah. like looking around, and you're like, what is everyone else well, thinking? <clears throat> and let's point out the scene uh, in which we are underwater. Mm-hmm. Um, when something, because there were such long shots and because it was dark, when something happens and that body deflates, mm-hmm. like I jumped because oh, yeah, I did. something oh, that, that happened. Sound I think, effect, yeah. I think yeah. everybody in our audience did. Yeah, yeah. because something was... happened, yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, you know well, but that's... <laughs> no, I agree. Again, I think it was it done was, to it was affect... completely unnerving. Yeah. And, and it was like, and uh, viscerally I was going... I, 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 my whole body shook because yeah, I did here. not want that to happen. I yeah. felt, um, I felt my own compassion towards another human being. And granted, it's a movie. I know it yeah. didn't really happen, but I was shocked. And, yeah. And I, it's a great effect. And, and it's a great effect, but I think it works because we talk about the long shots in a way, you know, th- they did build up a suspense in this movie. Yeah, that's a, that did that, not work for me. Yeah, but see, but but it had to have because no, it didn't. no in that scene where you're shocked <laughs> and you jumped. That scene. You know, but he does it a lot. No true. Okay, now that scene I will grant you and I and I I've said it I don't know how many times it shocked it unnerved me. I, all yeah, the things yeah, which yeah. I would expect that maybe that's what he was going for. But your point is he couldn't have been that unnerved had he not been through the whole ride. I believe me, I could have been. Here's a, <laughs> all the other long freaking shots that go on forever. I go, okay, please move what on. What do you think of the tree shot of those I know, trees? I, I, but I mean, some of those were amazing. That was pretty, yeah. Here's, here's what I think it is, right? In very much the same way that she has her checklist of things that she's hitting. Right. 
I think he looked he's looking at these types of movies now and he wants the ambiguity so he looks at a movie okay if there's a checklist of mm. of normalcy right what is the checklist of ambiguity or abnormalcy and okay if we hit okay so quick cuts are typical of mm. of you know normalcy okay so we're gonna go very long okay yeah, check yeah um you know there's mm -hmm. color okay we're gonna go black and white check mm -hmm. and i think he's you know, I don't. I would. I would. You know, again, I'm kind of interpreting for no, but him. That, but maybe that, there's I, a I, I think list. that's very interesting, and that's that's the part I would like to know more because I, I would love to watch the Blu-ray to hear his take if he gave one. I don't even I don't know that he would. Basically, would. I don't think he's going to give but, one. But but only just in terms of filming, I'm fascinated by it. But as as a movie going experience, I wasn't. But I am fascinated for his reasoning because I want I, only because I want to know what his intention was because then I could at least uh, try to go oh okay got it okay I know what you're going for and you wanted to but it just felt like okay, self-indulgence I want to know the goo though the goo the goo how oh, do they what? film the goo that was a great oh, scene by the way awesome, yeah. especially underwater were you talking about when they imploded you mean the red, the red Anyth goo. anything anything the, the walking okay. and the thing and mm -hmm. the th I want I couldn't find that anywhere I don't know. That's or a great no question. One, no, no one found but, well, it. you know, part of the, the skin floating in the water, that, that really looked like some sort of skin in water yeah. to somebody. It also lo looked at it might have been in air just floating and they slowed it down. That, like they dropped That's it true. from a roof or something like that and yeah. let the air currents just, and then it just was, and then somehow they superimposed or whatever they yeah. did in CG and stuff. But yeah, I found that fascinating. I love the first shot or one of the shots of the guy, I think it was the shortest guy walking down and you see his face go under yeah. it and I thought that was really captivating. I think that Absolutely. was the guy. The short that guy that she picked up in the club. Yeah, and, and isn't that the guy that we follow all the yeah. way down? Yeah, yeah. and he <clears> sees <throat> the other one. Yeah, and he yeah. looks up and she's right. walking, walking away. Across, yeah. yeah, Some fascinating imagery. Yeah, yeah, it was. And some not so fascinating imagery. <laughs> Let, let's talk about the marketing. <laughs> let's get into more of the more of uh, the not so abstract realm. So it cost, I read $13 million to make. Wow. U.S. dollars, not I'm surprised. Scottish or whatever. What would you have I would have more like five. Yeah, that's. I don't know what the um, I don't know what the currency level is. Um, I think it was like uh, a difficult film, twelve million. But it's okay, so we're around the same number. Yeah. We were when we were watching yeah. the credits. I was going. I was like, I this is a big. This is a pretty big budget yeah. film. Like I, I thought it was way smaller than whatever. Yeah, it I was. mean, I would say they put it into the special effects. Right. Yeah. Put all of it in. But even so, even so, I I don't know I. It's one of those movies. If if you're making a movie like this, you have to know you're not gonna. So far, it's made a million dollars. Right. You have to know you're not gonna really get a like. It, it, it's a well, challenge to make your money back. Is that what like you mean? A, yeah, like a yeah. Wes Anderson movie. At least as you know, some people love it. Others people, you know, mm -hmm. they think that movie's weird or his right. movies are weird. In but general. there's the production I, value. There's also all the stars in it, so you can see that the the chance to recoup would be more available. Is that what you? Yes. Okay. This, I, I mean, it came out at the perfect time at the height of Scarlett Johansson, especially, sure. you know, coming right, you know, hey, Captain America's in theaters. Hey, you want to see Scarlett Johansson nude? Go see this movie. Right. Yeah. But I'm wondering, like, how much did the, the studio that released it, which I'm going to, I'm about to give them props. They're called A24. Mm -hmm. um, and they are within the past, I'd say, year, like one of the, I think right now, uh, they're a great indie house. I mean, they're releasing movies, again, very polarizing. Their mm -hmm. first movie, I think, was Spring Breakers, which sure. personally I hated. Very polarizing. Right. But very, very polarizing. polarizing. Yeah, but they yeah. also did Spectacular Now. Mm -hmm. uh, they released The Bling Ring. Uh, the, 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 you know, they released this movie. They're taking, I mean, they have a lot of guts. And they're taking chances on these kind of movies. Now, as far as they're concerned, now, I don't know how much they paid Mm -hmm. to get the movie to release it. I don't know if there was a distribution fee involved. I couldn't find any information on that. But, you know, for them, the publicity this movie is getting, <clears throat> I think, heightens that studio's mm -hmm. stature. Yeah, and, and certainly people will know, go see it just because of the publicity. Absolutely. Because they'll want to know. If, and you're going to get people going who are loving it just because everybody thinks it's a genius. And right. some people will hate it because they want to be haters. I right. mean, and they'll go. And yeah. that's the only reason why they'll go. Yeah. and and Whether or not they're really interested in it. The our audience, I think they sort of kind of fell into the, they probably got caught into whatever hype there is mm -hmm. because again that 
The one guy was snoring. The other guy, he didn't even want to see the end. He just <laughs> yes. walked out, and he never you, came you back. You figure if you'd already been there an hour, you might right. as well. You might as well. Gotta, like, this, this better have well, something the, at the end. <laughs> that, that's the whole thing for me. If, if, I'm, if I'm paying for a movie, I, it's like 13 bucks. I paid to be here, so better, yeah. bad yeah. or good, you know, I want to get my time 14 in. 14 bucks yeah. worth. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I, sh- I should have asked. Uh, see, that's an interesting thing to ask at the box office go. How many returns have you had? You know, I mean, I, I wonder because that that happens often at a, at a theater if they don't like the movie. Um, but OK, from a marketing standpoint, I thought the trailer was OK. I but will say lo- there was no indication <clears throat> of aliens. No. I mean, the, no. the only the only indication is the summary that, that they have. Right. And but I thought the poster, on the other hand, was sort of awful. I didn't see the poster. Yeah. Well, this is where this we're looking at an image, you know, marketing image of it. It's just her feet. And yeah, but that's not the poster. I know it's like not the, the theatrical poster. poster. All right. I mean, you can barely like. You can clearly tell that's Scarlett's feet, though. Yeah, absolutely mm-hmm. beautiful. Yeah. No, the trailer for sure. When I saw that trailer, I, I know I, that's experience. a movie I have to see. Really? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. The what what, did it what, for what me. was yeah. it? It was it was all the images kind of that we've talked about. Oh, okay. Over uh-huh. over the th- the red going Got and the, that orange, mm-hmm. the kaleidoscope thing, and the trees. Um, you know, I didn't know I would get a hefty helping of all of it for you know <laughs> you'll get to watch each right. of these for five you liked them before now you'll <laughs> love them after five minutes of watching them but uh I, no, but those are all the things i was like so, yeah that made me want so to american so <laughs> anything good is worth yeah, overdoing have more yeah so so i want you to watch the trailer and yeah. see if it's okay, changed it's, yeah, yeah okay it. i'll watch yeah, the, trailer. Us, yeah, well, no, I'll watch the trailer the trailer I, and no, go I'm, i love this movie it's amazing <laughs> <laughs> short form awesome. would have been amazing as a short <laughs> uh, but no certainly got me yeah. t- t- got my attention for sure most, and watch. because of the imagery though right? Ab- absolutely was it, was yeah, it, that is, imagery. It, is there a narrative in the trailer not the most trailers no, most really. trailers no, have there's no, no idea about the you know being hidden cameras no idea about okay. um, yeah no idea what it, what it was nothing. Yeah, okay. nothing. Yeah. yeah I mean the only hint that we get is like you know we finally found an heir to Kubrick that, you know, yeah. there's a lot of like, right. film oh, credit right, quotes. Right. I, I saw that this like, morning. Like you yeah, said, hyperbolic, thing. but certainly I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. oh Kubrick, Kubrick. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the one thing we haven't talked about, we kind of talked about it, but I wanted to just pose it in front. You, you know, there's a sense that, you know, we could make the argument that she's starting to feel compassion for these uh, humans. Uh, and that's why she lets the guy go, and, and she then she gets more of it when this guy helps her. And in my mind, he's helping her. He isn't to get laid. He's, he's helping her because she looks like she's in trouble, and he's just helping her. Uh, and then that that becomes something uh, more intimate rather than just sex. Um, but the, and, and as she becomes, or last at least, I should, how do I say this? As you, she seems to exhibit more human feelings or a more human understanding. You can see her get scared, because yeah. before that she doesn't seem to be scared of anything, and you know, and may, why should she? Maybe she realizes that nothing can hurt her, or whatever. But I thought that was really interesting because as and that reminded me of our sense of our own humanity where when we when we realize we're alone or when we think we're alone and we're uh, out there and, and we're pray for everything mm-hmm. and, and then you could see the terror on her face and up up until the point that she had felt those human quote human feelings end quote she hadn't felt that ex- experienced terror you know when that guy's chasing her and all yeah. that other stuff because i think if that happened prior to her feeling anything she would have looked at this guy and probably would have taken him out or something yeah. i don't think she, that would have happened to her well, can I ask yeah how, it, yeah no because i was gonna say <clears throat> that was one of my questions that, that was something that i said why didn't she just kill this guy like yeah conk him on the head like, yeah and, and she's we not don't know. you know we don't know what she's what, susceptible to or, or not what she's so, capable right. of. we don't know if she can turn around and, just and um rip his head off yeah. or whatever and and i was joking about i'm i know the guy didn't take her in just to sleep with her mm-hmm. but no um but we don't know what she was capable of but we knew that she i mean she could have put him in a trance or that's what i was thinking something yeah. but 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 again but, i thought that that was the great irony of the film right. where the hunter became the prize but i just well, like to that, that point uh okay. you know this is what scarlett johansson her said um by the way don't call her scar joe she don't like that okay oh. well i won't, um, I won't neither then. do i this isn't a film I'll about call her women joe scar. 
This isn't a film about women preying on man or a kind of hypersexual relationship. It has nothing to do with those things. It's merely a lioness on the prowl hunting. I think by the end of the film, if you as an audience can feel sympathy for this other species as she begins to sympathize with us, that's the experience. That, that was actually the question I was just about to ask. Well, How that, many of you felt sympathy for her? Well, sure. That's, I think that's what exactly what I was just talking about. Yeah. I was alluding to the exact same thing. Is that Of course I did. Yeah. But I she's the only entryway into the movie. What's yeah, that? I mean, you know, if you're gonna follow well, her, it's her perspective. If you're gonna follow her yeah. walking for three minutes, as John yeah. likes to point out, yeah. then yeah, you better fall in love with her by the end. And have yeah, sympathy. Some, yeah, and and I think if nothing else, if if we realize our own compassion for whatever race, I think that's a good thing. Whether it be a carrot, as you mentioned earlier, or a cow, or, or an alien being, it, but compassion again, is it's always a good thing. If you look at it as an alien kind of a movie. Mm-hmm. You know, and again, I, I throw this to the big irony, and, and it's just my interpretation. Like, because the thing I was thinking about, how wild is it that, in a sense, like here we had this predator on the prowl, mm-hmm. obviously uh, killed, you know, good mm-hmm. handful of people, sure. uh, and then in the end, you know, who who becomes the hero, but the would be rapist, in a sense, because he prevents to, everybody he, else. He from prevents being... whatever else that this thing may have done regardless of the compact i mean you can look at it and become compassionate with Mm -hmm. that alien but we don't really see that alien until the very 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 end Mm -hmm. and um since you didn't was it a was it a twist for you when she took off her skin and that was a twist for me because i i at first i saw i saw for me i saw the spots of black Mm -hmm. and i'm like oh what's that and then she takes off i'm like oh that's why it's called under the skin i i just uh, i i I don't again. I don't remember when, but it was sometime when the black goo and people right. go bye bye. That oh, she's under the skin. Okay, mm-hmm. it's the alien ripping off her skin, so she's going to be an alien underneath. So at some point, I put that together. So, uh, and when he was looking at her and staring her down, I think he was. I I went to oh, he's making sure that she still looks the way she needs to look, and there's no mm. semblance of a of an alien creature poking through. You know what I mean? That's what I, that's where I took that. Oh, okay. And I think when she was looking in the mirror, she was realizing I'm not just this form inside but this is now on top of my skin and and what's that like to live i'm i know what it's like to be in my skin but now i've been in this skin for a while what's it like to to be that image Hmm. and that's one of the reasons why i think she takes off is she wants to experience more what it's like to be that image not what's underneath it that's where i went so when it came out and i saw the the black and everything and and I, i knew at some point the skin was coming off and we would have seen what we saw earlier which was that black creature I don't know if it was male or female. It was an alien. Yeah. Um, but when we saw it in the, when, when we saw it earlier, I knew we'd see it again. For the sake of time, I do want to kind of move on um, to kind of reception and things like that. Um, there was, you know, so we spoke about the trailer. There was, uh, and again, I'm, I'm so fascinated because there's the audience that just is going to see this because of Scarlett Johansson, right. but have no idea what they're yeah. getting into because. Mm-hmm. And I give a lot of credit to um, viral campaigns, but apparently there was a paparazzi still of, of Scarlett Johansson falling down that became like a sensation. Mm. And yeah. later on, we found out that it was intentional. But again, if you if if that's what your draw to the movie is, um, yeah, it's good. it's a challenge. You want them to go, so whatever you can do to get them to go is great. That helps you, but. It's, but it's also like going to create so much disappointment, <laughs> and it could hurt you because all these people are going to be going out there blogging. What? What the hell? This is it, you know. So it, 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 um, August um, of 2013, it it premiered at the Telluride Film Festival, but then uh, Dimitri has some interesting points about the 70th Venice International Film Festival. Yeah, um, they took it there, and it was predominantly booze. And that's uh, where it played in competition. Movie. Right. That was its first actual yeah. competition. Right. And I've never heard. I really, I don't know. I'm sure other movies can, have been done. Yeah, oh, I can. They, I kind of love that they, I don't it's know, like, that why? there's people who are so the... passionate about, they're like, mm. boo, <laughs> how dare you? Like, I don't know. They're just such film lovers that they're, <laughs> but, you know, if you make a bad one, they're, you're going to hear it. Wow. But apparently it didn't wow. get as worse a reception as Birth. Mm. Apparently Birth for him got a, a horrible so I'm wondering reception. if he thinks that's worse or so, better. It, that's well, a great question. He was happy that there was at least sort of a mix. Mm-hmm. He goes, okay, I get the booze, but there was some applause mm-hmm. as well. You know, and I think again, <laughs> what's been great about the what's been good about the marketing to me is that they've actually they really haven't hid that. Like they don't 
they've actually almost used it because they, they could, know there well, are how, people. How could you keep a lid yeah, on that? But. but 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 they've used it in a way knowing that the movie is going to be polarizing. Yeah, and it's to that particular to an audience sometimes. They like to go to a movie to make up their own mind. Yeah, yeah. When, when it's an independent Absolutely. film. Absolutely. Like, you know, not so much a Captain America. You want to uh-huh. go in and. But would you? Know, you? But, I would cap. I would like crazy. <clears throat> the most challenging film film of our time. The film no one wants you to see. I mean, I would. Of course, yeah, I, would, so, I would go crazy. And, on and, that. and I think A24 has done a good job because, again, we are talking about a movie that got an 84%. And, yeah, and Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. So when you say. Which, was anybody surprised by that? <clears throat> I was totally surprised by that. That it was that high. Yeah, eighty four is high. I um, mean, I enjoyed I, it. I, I, it's. I always hate the rating system because I don't. It know, is. If I it is. Give, like, if but that's our only me metric. From zero to one hundred, what I would give this movie. I, mean, I don't know. Just do it in well, base ten. It's an eight and a half. <laughs> the theater that we saw it at, uh, it was the AMC in Century City. Mm-hmm. They had a big um, easel backed uh, blow up bus shelter. And it's basically a review board. Mm -hmm. And you read things like Magnificent, The Best in Cinema, you know, Spectacular Mm -hmm. and Suspenseful. And, you know, but when you start reading like, you know, Suspenseful and it comes from the Wall Street Journal, okay, they're not necessarily going for the, you know, but you, you hide that by making it small. And when you put Spectacular and Amazing, and if you've heard like, you know, just in the periphery about this movie, Hey, I'd like to. I'd like to try to check out this spectacular movie. You know, you, you're going to come up with that's a different. A, that's what I, I. You know, I. I know the technique. A different opinion. I guess the technique works, but I just really hate the one line things because they they all seem the same. A spectacular, yeah. magnificent, like, mm-hmm. and you and know, you're, you're so not going unique. In. And like, okay, well, a film unique is a state of being, and mm-hmm. some people argue otherwise, but it's either unique or it's not unique. And well, you know, if you if you're arguing in the merits of film, every film is not unique, but because they're all kind of the same, you go in a theater and you watch it, so therefore it is not unique. But anyway, like we can argue on a different mm-hmm. thing. And I don't know. For me, I don't, well, I, I imagine though, if you're as a critic, I mean, I think we're we see a lot of movies, you know. Yeah. But uh, when you're when you're not critics, right, yeah. right. Well, <laughs> no. Um, I think a lot about Crispin Glover. I've heard him talk about movies, and he he talks about how you know. I guess he considers co- his films to be counterculture and stuff. And he says, you know, we're all there's the culture making these films. You mean like Back to the Future. <laughs> Yeah, 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 he, back to he, you know, he's he's counterculture. Ma- no, he makes his own <laughs> I, films I, I that know, are very I off the, offbeat. But um, but no, he talks about you know when when culture there needs to be something opposing that sure. making these other kinds of films. And I don't know if this fits that as much as he'd like to say it does. Mm-hmm. But it's certainly different from. I think many people would say that. I think they would. Yeah, so that's what. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I, you know, and I I I think about him saying that. I think there there's there's merit to that. To, I do to too. I think. Those, but, yeah. but that's why but I said I appreciate back. that he made it. I'm glad it's yeah. out of the norm that's terrific i mean yeah. there's all can just like music all different kinds of music i think there's room for all different kinds of films sure and, and here's with, with this film the only thing that i you know with with the other movies that we've done good or bad and you know we've enjoyed them but some audience may not necessarily particularly yeah. this is one of those movies that unfortunately you know i can't just say everyone should go out and see no it, it takes a very you know i would recommend it to a very specific type of friend or family member that i know mm-hmm. you know it's not just like hey go see this movie yeah. you know and you know, that, that's I, what makes it a little bit tougher I, yeah and and there are movies out there that you know that are so by the book that you've seen a million times sure. and you can easily say yeah you don't need to see that one right you saw it last year <laughs> you know yeah so but last, this is not we, one of those ones i mean i think you can say that well this is probably different than something you've seen in the last 5 years for me it was a movie that i actually liked more the more I was reading about it. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean that I'm still, you know, I'm still not Yahoo about like this is the best movie you've you got to go see this because this movie isn't for everybody. And and I'll be quite honest, these aren't the types of movies that I gravitate towards. I, I feel that movies first and foremost should entertain. And I was mesmerized by this movie, but it's hard to say that I was fully entertained by this movie. Mm-hmm. But I went along for the ride, and and you know I do like chewing on a movie after a while. To me, if the movie's good enough, and I can think about certain things and come up with, wow, I like the irony at the end. I like the Soylent Red as people. I, I I get what they're trying to do. You know that ends up being like I, I'll check it in the win column, even though I'm not gonna tell you know my my closest friends or. Yeah, I'm not going to tell my friends in Boston, oh, you got to go see this movie, 
because they'll, 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 they'll hate me. I, I'm there with you. I also, I, 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 I kind of love this movie, but I, I don't know that I'd watch it again anytime soon. Like, oh, I don't rewatch know it, but that's a whole different subject yeah. on rewatchability and what makes a movie rewatchable. But would you rewatch this? Like, I don't think would, so. I, I wouldn't. Not, yeah. not unless I had some more uh, information ahead of time, because. I got what I needed out of it. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd watch it with someone just yeah. to show them if they were really interested in this movie. I would never force it upon anyone. No, but uh, I probably would again if if it was with the director's commentary or something because uh, I would just want to know what the filmmakers, you know, you know, if they were saying, okay, here's what we were going for and this is what we were, you know, because I find that stuff. But I do li I like that on any movie. I want to know what sure. they're going I'm for, and why, too. and all that other stuff. I find that stuff fascinating. But uh, that for me, then I would. But other than that, eh, no. So yeah, even right. even if it is about the que asking questions, even if you knew the questions that he set out to ask, maybe yeah, that even if he said I don't have answer, but these yeah, are that's fine. These are he what doesn't I have to have the answers. About. I mean, sometimes right, right. I, as I mentioned earlier, I go, I know for the most part what I'm thinking about certain things, yeah. and I would like to know what he does because then I that informs me about who he is. It also makes me go, oh, well, I never thought about that. Sure, but you know, so I don't mind if he doesn't have answers, but I, but I do also like to know the questions he's asking yeah. or or what. Yeah. What whatever the experience he's hoping to create, just because you know, like I'm watching the you know, I, like when somebody's writing a song. What was the impetus for the song? I yeah. love to know yeah. what how that song. Wait, from that you wrote that. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm with you, but I and I think where this where this movie succeeds to a point mm -hmm. is that we're talking about it and not in a we didn't come out of the movie. Boo! Well, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, I think that <clears throat> it, it lends itself to a, a healthy discussion uh -huh. about this particular cinematic process. Uh -huh. What we've each taken away from this movie has been different experiences. And that's what I take away from watching. <clears throat> the movie literally did get under my skin because uh -huh. I thought about it last night. I thought about it this morning and, and reading articles about it. And, you know, and again, we all agree that we can't recommend it to everybody. I know I can't, but, um, you know, and obviously the audience members that we saw it with, they ain't recommending it to, you know, <laughs> the guy, well, who you left, want a good nap. Go <laughs> yeah, here, yeah. Yeah. You want to spend $14 to sleep. Yeah. You know, they're very comfortable chairs. Hey, at sometimes the end. that's a good answer. <laughs> yeah, you've done um, that many times. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, we can go on and on forever, but, um, I'm, I'm glad we had this healthy. Will discussion. it stay with you? I think for for some time, I, yeah. I mean, it, you know, by default it will because one one of the reasons I really wanted to do this movie again, it came out in the U.S. April fourth, so we're a little bit behind. Yeah. Um, you know, for us it's April twenty fifth, but I want I really wanted to talk about it because I feel like there's going to be a lot of discussion around it. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's I'm pointing to you because mm -hmm. there's many people that I want to stay with, but it, but will it stay with you? Oh, certainly, yeah. certainly. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's already that's, stayed with me. Yeah. I mean, like if I really. If if this movie made me angry, mm -hmm. it would stay with me for the wrong reasons, right. and then it would just disappear. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I saw it, and if somebody if there sort of come up in conversation, like oh yeah, I saw Under the Skin, and you know, hence another branch of conversation could go off in this movie. So it'll stay with me, and it has stayed with me. Uh, and like I said, I liked it. My knee jerk reaction was I couldn't. Like, again, I can't even pretend to know what the hell this movie's about. <laughs> Couldn't even like fake it. I like, and as I was reading about it, I I, I guess I the, the right word was I appreciated it a little more. Mm -hmm. um, still, don't think it's you know fantastic, but mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in yet again and again uh, with this particular movie. I feel like there's going to be a lot of healthy discussions. So uh, let us know your guys' opinions. Write, comment below, whether on on YouTube, iTunes, our website, whatever. <laughs> or again. heck, eat <laughs> damn music. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go walk in a hey, open you can warehouse. Walk out, you know, <laughs> hey, there's only a minute left of the show, so you can feel free to walk out. Um, but yeah, let us know. In, info at Anatomy of a Movie. Anatomyofmovie.com is, of course, the website. Follow us on Twitter at Movie Anatomy. And uh, we'll be back for a lot of movies coming out this summer. A lot of good ones. So we'll be we'll be talking about those. But can't uh, wait. It's, it's, it's been a fun ride. I'm, I'm glad we talked about this. Me too. So, um, nice Ian, pick. where can they find go. you? Any comic books out this year? You'll, if you really you? want to find me, you'll you'll find me. <laughs> Search me down and, and find If it's that important to you. You want to find me? Yeah. You want to find me? <laughs>
I think I'm laying a- down the gauntlet. <laughs> if you, if you want to find me, no, I mean, you can find me. You're, look you're look right for here. me. You'll, oh you'll see God. me. Right, I'm Marissa. around. Right here. I'm around. All right, Marissa Serafini, thank you for being in the booth. Take us out of here before these men get crazy. From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the rest of the Anatomy of a Movie staff, we would like to thank you for listening and subscribing to the show. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email or tweet us. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been Anatomy of a Movie. Thanks for watching Anatomy of a Movie on YouTube. For more on your favorite movies, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to let us know what you think in our comment section below here. Bye.